So pretty generically, um, we're going to be talking about when you're ready for a design internship, um, the application process, building up yourself as a designer in terms of the resume portfolio, um, and a bit on case studies and also how to find jobs. Um, in designing a career path, we'll talk a bit more about applying itself um, and other tactics like cold emailing, and we'll end up with the Q&A. So this is also actually the second iteration of this talk that we've run, and this one's a bit different. Like, we're not just reusing the same slides, just so you know. Um, so I'm not sure how long we'll take. <laughs> Hopefully, we get to speed through things, but there's a lot to cover. Um, at the same time, if you guys have any questions about any part of the talk, feel free to drop it in the chat. We have like four members who are going to be looking at your questions and we'll try to answer and we'll try to address it live also. Um, if we can't get to your question in the chat, the other great part about Develop is that, um, you know, we're a community for creators and creatives. So we highly encourage you to drop, um, uh, to join our like Discord and Facebook group where there will be follow-up discussions. We run a lot of design events because um, we're pretty design dri driven. If a core member can drop the link to our Discord um, on the chat so people can join, that would be great. We have a channel for the event also, and we'll share resources and links that are mentioned after the talk there, and you can ask questions there. Um, at the same time, we have a Slido. So if you go to um, slide.do, um, and enter 73386. You can send in questions if you want to ask questions anonymously, but um, highly encourage you to just use the chat if you can. Um, and again, just like join the developed community so the learning doesn't just end at this event. Um, and just so people know, this isn't like a super introductory design talk. It kind of assumes that you are already designing in some form and you're interested in finally like getting a design internship. I know there are lots of creatives who have been like doing this thing since middle school or delving into it lately, but have no idea what it's like to enter industry. Maybe you're not in a really technical or artistic um, major, and maybe you're just curious about what it's like, um, but we won't be covering like the fundamentals of design. This is more of like getting ready um, in terms of career. But if you have questions about fundamentals, feel free to ask us. Um, we will do our best to answer. Yes, and you can find more at develop.org slash community. That's our, um, that's a page that explains what we do. We also have a community portal and the links are dropped in the chat. Thank you, Raf. <laughs> um, and again, if you are just joined, feel free to answer these questions. You'll see people sharing them in the chat. Let us know who your favorite designer is so you can follow the people that inspire you. Let us know how you got into design. Um, if you want to share your work um, and share your links, if you have an Instagram or a website, feel free to share it also so we can follow you guys. And time for introductions. <laughs> to make this quick, um, hi everyone. Um, I'm Bianca Aguilar. Um, currently, when I'm not like studying, I'm a product and visual designer for a tech holding company. So working for tons of like early stage startups, pretty cool. Um, I do design at Develop and UX Society. Um, often um, uh, working across community and education. Um, and previously I've done more of the visual design and art stuff for Arete, Woman Create, so on and so forth. And um, yeah, I also luckily got to join like really cool competitions this year to um, boost practice my skills and I won, yay. So um, if you want to have any tips on how to win those things, just hit me up, yes. <laughs> Yeah, because a very multidisciplinary designer. Um, so definitely check out her work on her portfolio and follow her on Twitter. So they like the link underneath their names. Um, if you want to see more. Um, then as for me, I am Shia. I am the founder of Develop, and I'm also currently designing at Kumu. And um, I'm also working on creative research at Yale Center for Collaborative Arts and Media. That basically means that. I work on like creative code and creative tools um, and get to do a lot of experimentation and writing, which is really nice. 
Um, I'm a third year studying computer science and art. I originally thought that I was going to enter software engineering, but then realized that product design is better. Um, I have been interning since high school, so I have experience at the different startups. Um, this coming summer, I'm going to be joining the Facebook social impact team in California. And I also am an Adobe Design Circle Scholar and spoke at the Grace Hopper Conference, which is the world's largest women in tech conference. And that's my Roblox avatar. <laughs> and just to begin, um, as additional set of reminders, everything we're gonna be sharing in this talk is just based on like our experiences. Um, we are students, Bianca's in her second year, I'm in my third year, and we don't know everything, but we have gone through a lot of recruiting um, and have been working at startups since high school. And we're here just because we wanna share our knowledge and perspectives. Um, like you don't have to treat our talk as like the Bible. There are definitely so many different like career paths in design and this is just like one slice of it. Um, Bianca and I also came from the same high school. So just keep that in mind. So we kind of, so we have that similar thing in our background. Um, and we also both generally work in the social startup scene. Um, I'm sorry about the noise. <laughs> yeah, so just a reminder. Um, and if ever you guys want to challenge anything that we share or share like an alternate experience or point, please do so in the chat, we'll read it out. Um, we want to include as many perspectives as possible because um, this is just like from our own. But yeah, let's start with knowing when you're ready, know how to know when you're ready for a design internship. Um, first thing I want to say is that if you're showing up to talks like this, um, if you're kind of niche, I don't think there's a lot of like very focused career talks like this where it's open to the public. I think um, that shows that you're very proactive and that you're definitely far ahead um, compared to other people. And in general, um, the sooner you apply to internships, right, the more prepared you'll be for future work. Um, and the most important thing to notice is that, like, a lot of people think that when you want to enter industry, you have to be already very technically skilled. Um, you have to be, like, proficient. You have to have works that are the caliber of, like, people who have been designing since they were like so young and have thousands of followers. It's easy to fall into that comparison trap. Um, but really the most important thing um, about being ready for design as a career is just being teachable. And we're gonna be emphasizing that a lot. Um, the goal here isn't to have a mastery over your craft or skills. I just wanna emphasize that. Because a lot of people who are already amazing don't think that they're ready. Um, you just have to make sure that you're ready to learn and are in the right space. But there are some recommendations I do have for when it's a good time to take up a design internship. So this may sound intimidating, but I promise it's not. Um, so when are you ready for design internships? First point I think is that you have um, a decent design vocabulary developed. So when you're like doing something on Photoshop um, or Premiere, or when you're making an illustration, you can kind of explain like how you got to the point where your output is, um, especially with other designers, if you're working in a company that um, where, you're, where you won't be a sole designer. Um, and even if not, you should generally be able to articulate the parts of your process, like what tools did you use? What techniques did you use? Um, what software did you use? Um, make sure that you're familiar enough and can share those things. Um, this does mean that you have to be like a design expert and have mastery over it, but then just be able to communicate your designs. Um, when you share something with friends, for instance, very easy for them to just like praise you instantly. Um, try to share things with strangers, I guess, and be able to accept critique. Um, just so you can share your designs better and also so you can improve on it. Um, especially when you're working with different kinds of stakeholders. Um, another thing to take note of is that you are at the stage where you design with intention. So a lot of designers, um, obviously we start out with like imitation, copying references, things like that. Um, I see this in like illustration and graphic design um, where you just like look at things on Pinterest and try to replicate that when you make pubs for your org or something. Um, or when you're a UX designer and you just try to copy dribble stuff, right? Um, 
that's a good way to learn and pick up skills but there's a difference between like um building up your design practice by imitating things and actually like going through a project and establishing like the problem space yourself doing the research yourself and making the decisions yourself there's a point um in your practice where you should be able to create things on your own um without just like imitation you have to be able to make your own decisions so keep that in mind and i guess the most important thing also is that um you're in a time when you're ready to learn this is something i don't see a lot of people following um obviously a lot of people have been holding a lot of internships over the past year because of the pandemic um everything's remote work you don't have to commute generally um and people hold multiple roles at once and in an effect Uh, they may not be learning as much as they can, and the work ends up just being like resume pounding work, where you're not able to actually effectively influence or impact the place, um, your your career place. Um, so I would say that make sure that you're in a time where you're ready to learn, where when you get the internship, you're not just there to do tasks assigned to you or do like the bare minimum. You're there to also absorb things from other designers to influence the company's decisions, um, to prevent people um, to pick up the techniques and tactics to make sure that you're like not overloaded because um, the goal later on is to always over deliver um, in your internship. So yeah, if you're just there to turn out work for your portfolio, that's not an ideal time to get an internship. You can do that with an organization. You can do that for your own projects. Um, and you just want to be at a generally like a good time of your life where you have a lot of time and a lot of energy. Um, That sounds like kind of obvious, but then just keep that in mind. But yeah, other things to make note of are try to be a bit self-aware about your strengths and weaknesses as a designer. That also sounds relatively simple, um, but when you're going to articulate this in interviews later on, you may find that it's harder um, to realize what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, It's also good um, in the job hunt later on to understand what kind of role you're looking for. For example, um, are you going to be okay with working in a company where you're the only designer? Um, that might be dangerous, especially if you're a newbie. Um, if you're going to work in teams or are you always like a leader in class projects and orgs, do you think you can collaborate in a setting where you're going to be following another manager? Um, You also want to understand whether you work well with a lot of constraints and like guidelines from people and references, or if you like getting like nothing, because those are going to influence like, I guess the types of workplaces you apply to um, or should be applying to in order to succeed. So yeah, in general, just have at least like some semblance of response to the questions thought out. Like these are questions that everyone um, in the design career will constantly be thinking about like you will never have a definite answer and you'll always be evolving but at any stage you should at least have a concrete idea of like um what do I want to improve on next um and what am I good at right now so the idea here is that you want to know what you want to get out of an internship and be able to have an objective you don't get an internship just for the sake of it um aside from pay ideally you also have a goal you want to learn more about the industry Do you want to learn more about video editing because you've mostly just done graphic design? Things like that. Those are just things to keep in mind in general. So I would say start thinking about those questions um, at any stage of your design life. Okay, so, so for everyone in the chat with the questions like um, Chia brought up, we'd love to like know your answers to these. So to like start like your um. Um, design journey, right? So, what are your strengths as a designer? Your weaknesses, and how you work with people? Are you better like on your own, or um, do you need um really structure from others and from a huge company, right? Yeah. So, like, like I said in chat, the more you know yourself, um, the better you can like control your direction as a designer. Otherwise, like, um, if you don't know yourself as a designer, how can like those who are recruiting, right, like, know who you are? Yeah, those are good points. If you guys are willing to share, we'd love to hear it in the chat. Like, for example, um, I personally think that I need to work a lot 
more on how I communicate designs, um, like verbally or in presentations. I'm really bad when explaining things to people. I've never been really good at teaching people, which is a bad thing to say because I'm giving this talk. <laughs> but I'm a lot better at writing things down um, or explaining things in like a video that I record for people to watch later on. But if I'm like made to give an on the spot presentation, I really suck at it. And in all the jobs I take up, I'm trying to get into roles that force me to do that. Um, Bianca, do you want to share? Okay, so just um, adding on to what um, I said in chat, as a designer, I, I really need like some semblance of structure around me, but not too suffocating to the point that um, I don't have creative freedom, right? Which is why I really like startups um it's hard because um it can be at the stage where um everyone um doesn't know what they're doing and i find working on that ambiguity really fun but i feel like for future careers i want to try something with structure just so i know how to implement it better in these kinds of environments how about you guys let us know in the chat yeah, and you never know, you may find a potential collaborator who has um, a strength that is your weakness and vice versa. So if you want, um, while we go and talk more over the next sections, please feel free to share your answers to this. Um, the next, uh, we'll be going over, you know, resumes, portfolios, probably the bulk of this talk. Um, so what do you actually need in order to apply to internships? So these are the things that I'd say um, are good to have prepared um, when you start job hunting in design. So obviously you need a resume. Um, and here there's like a divergence. We didn't do this in the last talk, but um, two portfolios, um, not in terms of like, you don't need like two completely separate bodies of work, but rather they exist in two different formats. And we'll talk about that a bit more later on. But one portfolio is for hiring. So this is like your website. Um, this is what people see when they look you up online. Another portfolio is for walkthroughs. So when you're asked to explain something a bit more in depth, what will you be using as a deck to show that? Um, so that's the presentation part of things. And also the case studies that comprise a portfolio. Um, I'm also speaking from experience as a product designer. So like doing UX design and stuff like that. So it's definitely a bit different for like illustrators um, and people of those kinds of backgrounds. I'm not sure um, how in-depth case studies have to be for those areas, but just for context, like in UX design, like case studies are pretty thorough and explain like a lot of parts of the research and design process. So just keep that in mind. Um, but here are some general tips on making resumes for design roles. We won't be explaining the basics of resumes. Um, if you want, develop actually has a lot of talks about like writing a resume um, in general. So maybe a core member can drop the link um, in the chat. Um, we had talks like that in our assembly. Um, and also we're currently doing resume reviews. So we have a schedule, we have schedules for tomorrow and next week in case any of you are interested in getting your resume reviewed. But aside from that, I will now explain um, some tips for design resume. Um, I think in general, the important parts are to make sure that your resume is visually pleasing, not in the traditional designerly sense that you may see in Pinterest or like Google images. Um, it doesn't have to be over designed or use a colorful kind of a template, but you do have to show mastery over form type twice based on like the content of the resume. Um, maybe content's a bit controversial, but then because I don't know, some designers think that content is part of design, some not, but um, in general, you will want to perfect these things for your resume, um, which is like the first thing that people look at um, in order to see if they are even willing to open your portfolio at times. Um, so remember that this is like a first threshold and bar um, for screening. So just make sure um, that you have these covered. In general, in terms of form, when I say form, I'm talking about the overall structure and like architecture of the resume. How do you order the sections? Um, where's your education? Is it easy to glance over? Um, type. I would recommend using type checklists that like are very strict about like the letter spacing and line height that you should use and things like that. Um, for serif and sans serif fonts, you'll have to look at things differently. Um, 
are you able to also um, craft a resume that is pretty clean um, in terms of white space? And again, for content, the way you condense descriptions of your work, articulate your skill set, communicate the impact you've had in your former roles. So uh, this is a scene through some examples. So this is Jill Stresme, who is a Filipino product designer. Um, and this is just a glimpse of her resume. And I'm going to be showing like basically a series of different resumes. And I would love for you guys to share um, what you like about it or what you don't like also. Um, in general, um, keeping maybe like the things I mentioned in mind or just like your like visual intuition as in imagine you were a recruiter and looking over a stack of designer resumes, would this stand out to you? Um, what would your impressions on it be? Um, Bianca, <laughs> what are your impressions? <laughs> on first glance, like I really love like how comprehensible it is like from afar. Like it's just really easy on the eyes, you know, because um, Remember when you're designing resumes, you are also designing the user experience of this for um, recruiters, um, people you're working with. So like, if you can't even design this experience, well, how can they trust you to design like whole products or services for them, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. to note, guys, she also highlighted the company names first to flex the, <laughs> type of flexing the brand names also and her descriptions are um super this have so much context yeah i think um like on the base level what stands out to me um about this resume is that i really like the font like you know when you see a good design like sometimes the first thing you just ask is like oh my god what font is that and i really really like the font that she uses for her name and for the company titles that are emphasized i'm not sure if other people agree i think it's a really pretty serif um and i think it's very interesting that it's dark green so it's like the one pop of color that's used consistently throughout the resume everything else is like blacker and grayscale um it makes the most important things her name and the company names stand out a lot yeah the font is really good i will look it up what it is later <laughs> um yeah honestly that already makes it stand out um it's clear that she has a lot of work experience um Something interesting also is that the tools are laid out very cleanly and it starts with pen and paper. Because honestly, you'd be surprised at how there are designers who don't like working with pen and paper at all. Maybe me at times. Um, and for some reason, um, like I don't see this layout a lot. Um, so it's pretty interesting um, in general. It's still very clean. Yeah, the font pairing is really, really good. And it's not overly designed. Um, really, the only pop is the font used. And it works really well. Um, this is another resume. I'm sorry, it's a bit blurry. I am better picking screenshots. Um, it's from Maxine Cole, um, who worked also at Facebook and also Philippine Product Design Studios, um, or Design Studios. She worked at the VG. Oh my god, I'm not sure if I pronounce it right, but yeah. Um, she worked on better.ph, which is a really cool website about, never mind, if you guys want to look it up. Um, but yeah, Filipino product designer, also her resume. Um, same thing I noticed also is that there's also one pop of color, um, it's like the orange. And if you look at her site, it also has that. I think it stands out really well. And it shows that she took on pretty good she took on like pretty interesting roles um, in her workplaces. Um, in her school, she served as senior product designer and I guess like a student organization or something. And that's already pretty interesting. There's also a lot of white space that's used well. Um, I like how her name is very big and clear. <laughs> Thank you for sharing better.ph Bowie. <laughs> I also, well, the other resume had like the serif font. I have a soft spot for like um, very nice monospace fonts. Um, and here, it's not super clear, but like the date or the years rather, um, the work experience and the section headings, they use um, a monospace font. 
really, really nice. Um, in her tool section also, something I noticed is that like the first section is like design tools. So there's like Figma to Premiere um, and InDesign and stuff like that. The second part highlights um, her, code, her skills in coding. Um, for product designers, obviously you don't need to know how to code, but then it's always a nice to have. And it's sectioned off pretty well. Um, so this is nice to see. Yeah, grids are very powerful. <laughs> uh, simple but nice. <laughs> I don't know if this is a comment, but the way her name is placed feels almost architectural. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see that. Yeah, and also note that in these two resumes, um, their websites and emails are highlighted. Like it's super clear. Um, like aside from their name, I easily drawn to it, so I can easily find their portfolio. I'd like yeah. to note the accent colors also. Um, it brings like a bit of personality into the resume, but at the same time, like not too like Canva overwhelming, right? Yeah. Also, yeah. Um, Pao mentioned that Jill's is like off white. It's like a beigey thing. That's actually a nice touch. Um, because no one's printing out resumes, um, at least when you're applying online, feel free to play with the background color. So it's not just blinding white. Um, another one that it's a more traditional format, um, where it's like one column, is Darren Buzon, who's a Southeast Asian designer. Um, He's famous for writing an essay last year um, called Design Thinking is a Rebrand for White Supremacy, which is a really good read. Um, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, but you'll notice that obviously this is very different. There's not as much like traditional like white space as in these first two resumes, but he highlights another area um, of like, I guess, expertise. I couldn't capture the whole thing in one image because um, I'm also bad at taking screenshots. You can see it cuts off, but then um, aside from highlighting his essay, which is like very influential in the design community, which is like a thing in itself, he has workshops and teaching. Shows that he's an educator, um, which is really good. Um, Bianca mentioned that the section titles are in lowercase, so it shows off like personality. It's, yeah. Um, he has a summary and we usually don't recommend this because then summaries are usually like very generic. They're like, I'm a self-driven, self-starter, blah, 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 looking for a role. But then if you um, zoom in or just like open his website and look at his resume, you'll see that his um, summary like shows how all of these different experiences um, and his work across writing and education connect to his practice. Um, there are also lots of links. So hyperlinks are very important in design resumes because obviously we'll be viewing them online. Um, it gives more context to his work. So that's really nice. And again, um, none of these have had like any extensive visuals. Um, note that it's just all like the type and the color usage. Yeah, it's very neat. So this is like a um, random traditional like resume from <laughs> Pinterest that I think um, designers may fall into the trap of like using at first. Um, and we can explain why it's not so ideal. Um, so there's like an illustration, it's clear that this person is like um, an illustrator plus graphic designer, um, but it's, but there's a lot of like context that's missing from this piece. Like obviously we can gleam their graphic design skills, but the resume isn't really the place where you're supposed to show that. You have a portfolio with the link for a reason. Um, her contact information and portfolio is like all the way in the bottom. And something that is like very not ideal um, for resumes is the visual rating of skills. So in the software skills, like um, if you're a designer, obviously, you know, it's like Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, um, but then Still, it's not very clear. A recruiter might be confused at that, especially because those applications change their color scheme every year. Um, and also, like 75% in Photoshop doesn't really mean anything. It can mean different things to different people. It's very subjective. Um, it's not supposed to look like an Instagram infographic. Yes. Bianca, do you have thoughts? <laughs> 
Um, again, like, um, I know this is visual design um, specific, but that doesn't mean your design should be completely incomprehensible. Like, remember, you're a designer and you're communicating, like, about yourself. And you're showing the recruiter that this is the way you're going to communicate their product or service in this very incomprehensible way, right? Like, if you check the color and the contrast too, if you're colorblind, you won't be able to read it. Um, she seems more like, like an illustrator to me. Yeah, that's why you need to be careful of how you lay out your resumes. <laughs> There's a cat, but I, but Callie said, um, I feel like I don't, I didn't really get to know what she did during her experiences. That's true. Um, she has like a lot of experience that listed. Um, she has her education, but I don't know when she graduated. Um, she mentioned that she was um, a designer at a club, but I don't know what exactly she designed. Um, there's also a role where she was a marketing intern. You can't see it, but it's like R-A-M-J-S-E. And obviously she's not, we don't know what that company name is. Maybe we'd know if we were in her country, but then um, it's like a confusing acronym. And also there's freelance work just listed. And I know a lot of designers here do freelance. I do not, just so you guys know. Um, but we don't know what clients she has. It just says freelance work and self-start st study. Um, Ideally, if you've done freelance work, you link to the work you've done um, or you name the clients, especially if their names are recognizable. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of information and context shared. And although I can get a sense of her design skills, I'm going to see that in her portfolio. I just wish I knew more what she did because, you know, technical expertise um, and like proficiency in illustration isn't everything in a design role. Instead, you want to learn about what projects they worked on. Like if you worked at, um, if you worked on a music um, application, obviously you would be more of a fit for Spotify than someone who worked and did like sports branding, right? So having that kind of context is really important, but we're missing that here. Um, actually knowing what other software skills she has would be also important, would also be important. Um, it would have been better to see this in descending proficiency because a recruiter who might not really understand things will see, oh, wow, this person is only like 50% in design. Um, there are people who are better than that. So generally don't rate your skills. Um, and in general, I just, there's a lot more um, that I'd love to know about her. Like, was she a leader in anything? Um, did she initiate anything? What was the outcomes of her work? And these are things that aren't seen. Um, so in general, it's like a summary of some of the do's and don'ts that we um, covered. Um, in your resume, you generally want to make your portfolio link very visible. This is a big thing because generally people will look at your resume first and then decide if you want to click on your portfolio. Um, and here also note that her portfolio is like all the way in the bottom. It should be somewhere up here. Like it has to be the first thing I see. Um, and he, and in the past three, their portfolio links are very clear. It's like right next to their name. It's highlighted and colored. Um, it's just easier to get to. So you have to think about that too. Um, as a student, because I'm assuming you guys are students or recent grads um, looking for internships, it's also important to have your education highlighted in general, I guess, just because graduation year is relevant to people, especially um, if you're a junior, I guess more people are looking for like juniors um, to test you out and then like potentially get you as like a fresh grad. So it's important to also highlight education. You'll find that in like uh, Max and Jill's work. Um, or actually Max work, Max's work. Jill took out her education. Um, like her education at NYU is like, it's there. It's the first thing you see also aside from her portfolio link. Um, also important is to add context, quantify the impact of your work. If you have numbers on how many people you reached, um, what you generated for the business or organization, you really have to add that. Um, to add the statistics, metrics, um, client names, if you worked at an agency or studio or if you did freelance, who are your clients? Like link to them, um, especially if you can link to the exact project you did work on. Um, also important, we didn't look at any like three-page resumes, but 
make sure that's one page and clean. Um, and link or list down your tools and software proficiencies. Uh, this especially goes for like design roles because I don't know, um, one design job might ask you to use Figma when you're used to Sketch. And although it's like relatively easy to transition, it's so important to know um, what tools you're already using in your practice currently. And things to avoid again, don't do visual skill ratings. Um, you don't have to do photos or bio data. Um, a lot of Philippine resume templates um, recommend you to add like your religion, your marital status, your height, things like that. Um, you don't even have to add like your, you don't have to add that. You don't even have to add your cell phone or your address. If you want, you can add your city, but then in general, it's better to leave those things out. So don't do that. Um, also don't add like random illustration because that can speak for itself unless you find a way to incorporate really well. I can share maybe examples of resumes with like very minimal illustrations that work nicely. Um, because it ties in with the designer's branding. But right now, yeah, you don't have to do it. Um, and make sure that everything is readable. Um, so don't ever sacrifice like readability here. Like for example, this is very cute, but then the brown text on pink is actually pretty hard to read. Like I can't read the summary. This is the only context we have of what this person does. Okay, so if you wanna look at other like resumes um, and portfolios as well, these are like three, uh, well, most really do sites that are pretty popular, um, I guess in like the Western design scene. Um, there's also Filipinos who design, I wanna add that. Um, let me get the link right now. It's probably just filipinoswhodesign.com. But look at co-folios or best folios. Um, there's sites that compile um, portfolios from student designers. Um, co-folios is all students and best folios is like mix of people industry. Here's Filipinos who design. There's also another nice database. Wow, we said it at the same time, Bianca. <laughs> this is a really great database. Um, yeah, of uh, local designers and their websites. Um, so also look that up. There's many familiar faces there and submit yourself if you want. <laughs> but really just like look at the studio, see like look at other designers. I know it's kind of weird to like stock portfolios, but then it really helps um, get inspiration and just connected and to just get connected with people in industry. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> that was so long. Yeah, <laughs> do you wanna talk about the prom? Oh, okay, okay. So not you're all enlightened, like, oh, this is what a good resume is supposed to be like. Let us know in the chat, like what insights have stuck with you the most, like, be realized, oh, I shouldn't put my photo in there, or I shouldn't use, like, use Canva to make it like super colorful. Um, what mistakes have you made and how are you planning to improve on this? Don't worry, it's a, this is a safe space. We're all learning as designers. So no worries if you've made um, wrongs in your resume, as long as, you know, we keep improving on them. Yeah. I can show like my resume in high school. I actually have it up. <laughs> if you want to see the evolution. Wait. Okay, I'll link it later. <laughs> These are really hot. But uh, yeah, I'll share it later. Um, and feel free to share mistakes and realizations. Um, please don't worry if like you've heard otherwise in like your school career office people, like everyone has different opinions about what works. Um, though I do find that schools are a bit more dated than usual. And yes, choosing a resume font is like biggest challenge. Um, don't worry about that. You'll constantly be changing it. Okay, I will not talk about portfolios. <laughs> so, um, this is in terms of hiring portfolios. I That's not like the best word I should have used, but then um, this is the portfolio where you, it's like usually someone's portfolio website. Um, the goal of this is that um, a recruiter is gonna stumble upon it and wanna interview you and continue you along the process. So in general, it's good to think about your portfolio portfolio as if it were a design project. So what is the actual objective of the portfolio? Is it just to flex or is it just to like collate all your work? 
Not really, because the actual objective is that on your online portfolio, you want to get recruiters as interested in you as possible in the shortest amount of time. So like from a quick glance um, of your PDF portfolio or your website portfolio, are, are you someone that um, they think is qualified for the position? Like, are, can you already show that you have the skills for the job and are like interesting enough to be in the role? So um, again, just to articulate what the hiring portfolio is, it's usually like the website or link PDF. Um, but then there's also the portfolio that's generally like a separate like structure and format where you thoroughly explain projects. So we'll explain why you should, shouldn't like have every single detail um, about the project and your website later in a bit. But there are two types of people um, who will be like kind of looking over the portfolio that you have to keep in mind. So um, remember that there's usually a recruiter who's just there to manage the recruitment process. Usually they're looking over multiple roles. They're not really a design expert, like they just do like the staffing of the company. They do initial screens. Um, they find candidates from the pool who are interesting enough to bring to like a hiring manager. Hiring manager is the employee who like makes the request, like, oh, we need a design intern. Um, and they make the actual decision. They just like pass it over to the recruiter who will process you for the next step. Um, and they'll share more information about you later on in the process when you do get to talk to them about like the day-to-day -day of the company. Um, you'll generally be working with them or with someone they oversee, but you won't work with like the recruiter in your job, if that makes sense. So those are two people to keep in mind and the portfolio has to like keep the interest of both people. So you'll notice that the recruiter is someone who is not very technical. Um, like they're not a designer. They're probably just like a staff or random staffer. But the hiring manager is likely also someone who will be in the design team you're with. Um, I won't go too in-depth into this, but there are different hosting options where you can do your portfolio. I would love it if people can share like what tools they've used um, for their own portfolio or what tools they've considered. There's so many different options. Um, so here you can see um, their Notion and card portfolios. Um, some people use Behance as a social site. Um, you can use Wix. You can just lay it as a, uh, as a PDF, which I think is like what most people do. Um, you can put your portfolio on Medium, um, like the blogging site, which actually has pretty good publishing methods, or you can code your own. Not recommended if you don't have enough time. Um, for paid options, there are site builders that um, I guess like professional views or people with money use. Um, there's Cargo, the formerly Cargo Collective. There's Squarespace. If you look at like, like professional designers a lot and stock their portfolios, so you'll be able to recognize the same Squarespace templates used over and over in Webflow. Um, Webflow is like a no code, code tool that's getting a lot of popularity. Um, so like it's also a site builder where you don't really have to use any code here. Um, so yeah, Lo would love to know if people are currently hosting their portfolio as a PDF um, or if you guys have it on Notion or if you're just uploading stuff on Dribble or Behance, um, would love to know what you're doing. Um, yeah, GitHub and Heroku. Raph, you're not a designer. <laughs> so let's, let's just talk about the components um, of which Pino portfolio and we'll dig deeper into these into this in a bit. But in general, portfolios should have at least like the bare minimum of these sections. The and it's not a lot, really. Um, your front page should have a bit about you and your best work showcased, like two to three pieces or something, um, an about page. This is something a lot of people don't realize um, the importance of. The content here is something you have to like incrementally perfect. Um, the more you know about yourself, the better you are at writing it. Um, who are you? What's your story? What drives you? Um, after looking at your work, people will always like click on your about page. Like if you ask designers to have like stats on and their website, the about page clicks are like, that's the most visited page aside from like obviously the first page of the site. Um, you should have contact information somewhere if you wanna be contacted, like have your email at the very least. Um, you can also link your LinkedIn or professional like Twitter or Instagram or something. Um, of course your project pages where um, your work in the front page links to those, um, but not all people have that. Um, 
So it's mostly a UX design thing, I guess, or like if you have extensive like branding work done. Um, and then resume, have your resume linked. This is why we don't recommend um, having like bio data or like references or something on the resume because it's something that should be public because it does condense your work history. Um, so you don't need your number there on the internet. So have that visible in an area. Um, when thinking about these components, they should all help you articulate who you are as a designer um, and also help people know what you're looking for. As a design student, um, you're likely a generalist, so you have many different skills. You've likely done video editing and have been forced to do copy and write captions and have been forced to do just like design templates and things like that. You've probably been forced to do everything. That's like Filipino design. They want you to do everything, right? But you should try to be clear in what you want to focus on, what's your current strength, and what you want to do next. Um, you also have to remember that people will glance over the site and make a decision whether you're interested or not in seconds. So you have like very little time to make an impression. Um, and when you're doing your portfolio, always ask friends and strangers. Um, you can drop it in the develop Discord, for example, or in the group um, to get feedback and opinions on what the portfolio makes you think. Not good to just ask friends because they'll always tell you it's nice. Um, so these are some examples of portfolios. So this is one from uh, Richard, um, who is currently a conversation designer and product designer at Makisu. <laughs> um, his portfolio is on Notion. Um, and he has like an introduction about himself, a shot of him talking. So you know he's like a speaker. Um, he has links to his case studies and featured work. He has a link to his resume and he also has links to his writing. So Notion is super easy. Um, you can add a domain name to Notion. There are, um, there's like Notion add-ons that you can do to have a domain in each of your public page and Notion is free for students. So this is a good option and I think it's gonna get more and more popular and all, it's also so, so easy to edit. And I think a lot of people here love Notion. So that's something you can consider. Um, Justine Nguyen is another Filipino designer. She was working here for like, I think over a decade and then moved to Shopify um, because her portfolio was linked on like Twitter and people said, wow, this portfolio is so nice. Um, Shopify, someone from Shopify saw it. Um, she went through the recruitment process and she moved to Canada, I think, and is now a designer there. <laughs> That's how good her portfolio was. Um, and it's all because someone saw it on Twitter and said that it's like amazing. Um, this one's self-coded, I think. Um, and the thing is, um, she has a very nice introduction about herself. She did like a photo shoot apparently just for her website's pictures. Um, and when you click on her case studies, she actually doesn't host it in her site. She hosts it on Medium, um, which is like a blogging site. So an external site. Um, and that's something you can totally do because perfecting like the the type and spacing and images on your websites, like that's pretty hard. So doing it on Medium or Notion is like very understandable because it's already formatted and all you have to do is like paste in content. Um, another one from Mika, who was also a panelist for us at um, one of our internship talks um, this last year. She has her portfolio on behind. Um, and I think this is also a very popular option for Filipino designers, especially people in branding or illustration and art. Um, the hand is like pretty industry standard. Like I know a lot of senior designers and people who have been working for decades who just like stop, have stuff in the hand. They don't have their own personal site, it's just like there. And that's totally fine. Um, so something great about it, obviously you guys have probably been on this website is that you have a lot of control over the individual case studies. Um, so when you click on a project, you have a lot of flexibility in like laying it out. And obviously it can just be like a stack of images. Um, I guess the downside is it is like branded under Behance and um, in the work grid, you don't have a lot of control. And also people don't like how it's social and that you're perceived even though like no one ever fights on Behance. It's all just like people clapping for each other. But this is also a totally valid thing. This is mine. <laughs> I self-coded it and I don't just do product design. I also recruit for like product management roles and I also write. So my portfolio tries to showcase those different areas. Um, 
And I have very, very long case studies precisely because of the PM and write report. So I found that it's better if I posted it on my site um, so I can embed interactives and prototypes and stuff easier. So this is an example. You can look at it if you want to judge. This is Bianca. Is Bianca, do you want to talk about your site? <laughs> okay, that's still a work in progress. But um, I used Webflow because um, even if I know how to um, code per se, um, it takes me like a really long time, especially when it comes to making it um, responsive. Yeah, that's why I opted for Webflow. It had that um, control between um. I could like just drop and drag things. And if I want to customize it, I could like easily just change values. Yes, but that's still a work in progress. So again, um, my answer to Patricia, the platform that works best for you really depends on your capacity as a designer. But remember that content takes precedence over your portfolio. If you spend too much time working on your portfolio, your content will suffer. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. If you just have to whip up your portfolio, like literally just do it on like Behance or make a PDF, whatever is easiest to you, put it on slides if you want. Just make sure you get your work out there. Like a portfolio is like a long effort. Like for this site, I have been working on it for like over a year, just like making incremental updates to it. So it wasn't like this a year ago. It will not look like this a year from now. Um, and also I have a background in CS and in front-end development, which is why this was a bit easier for me. But don't do it if you can. Um, so yeah, let's go on to the components. So <laughs> using Bianca's website as a sample. Um, but again, for the front page, you want to have a memorable introduction. Bianca introduces herself as a Filipina visual designer and artist passionate about technology and humanity. It's not just like, hi, I'm Bianca. I'm a product designer at Ateneo. Very different. Um, this one is like more memorable. Like when I see her website, I remember her as like um, the technology and humanity person because not a lot of people use that descriptor. Um, the projects, like when you scroll down on her site, it's immediately visible and easy to get through. Oh, I made this a prototype. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> here um, we can go down and then see her selected work right away. Um, here she showcases her role. Um, screenshots of the work so I can get a glimpse of what it looks like. Um, for the case study in progress, it's grayed out. I know that's good, so I don't have to click on it. Um, he has a blurb about each project that gives a bit more context. Really good. And also there's only four projects um, and they are really good projects. So she highlights quality over quantity. So really good thing. Um, her socials are linked here. There's a nice back to the top button, it's another touch. Um, when you click her learn more, you go to her about page. So very straightforward and well designed and her branding is like everywhere. It's very cute. So it's a very good front page. Good job, Bianca. <laughs> and as I mentioned, about page is like the second most important thing. It's how you identify yourself, the longer summary of your experiences, other interesting projects. Um, this is a very, very important page. So be compelling and memorable. Um, ideally, if someone clicks your about, you've like, this is your chance to captivate them as a person. Um, how are you, uh, what are you learning? How did you get into design? What do you do? Um, your website is also a place where people will find you and make connections out of you. So Bianca yeah, talks about everything from Dungeons and Dragons to fitness to philosophy. So if you are interested in any of those topics or want to work in a project area, you know that Bianca is the person to reach out to um, in regards to that. <laughs> she helps with like page. job searches as well because um especially when you're like looking for oh what do I want to work with oh I want to work in ed tech I want to work in like um health tech like these kinds of interests when um recruiters see them they're like oh if she's interested in this then it'll make her more likely to want to work on our company right so yeah don't be shy to like um, talk a lot about yourself because this is also where like recruiters get to know you right before like interviews and stuff if you're just known as a designer then you're not it's like you don't have an identity you have to you are different as a person and as a designer you are not like i hope i'm making sense here design should be all of your identity yeah that's a summary 
Yeah, guys, remember that you're not just an artist. You're not just a designer. You're so much more than that. Share your interests, even if they're stupid. Um, or <laughs> even if you think they're stupid and silly. Chances are there are many other people who share those. Um, and it's just nice to show all dimensions of yourself on your site. Because, you know, we're not just looking for designers. Um, Otherwise, people would just be cherry picking like the people with the best technical skills, but that's not the case. You're looking for people with like personality and depth and different backgrounds to bring into like the workplace. Okay, so this is blurry because my full page screenshot app on Chrome couldn't contain Bianca's case study, but we'll delve into more into case studies in a bit. But um, important things to know this is where you dive into process, mostly for UX designers and product designers. Um, you showcase in each project your role, um, your teammates make it clear what you contributed and what you um, what you own in the project. Giving credit is very important, especially when you will be working with people. Um, when you choose case studies to highlight in your portfolio, it's better to choose things that have been shipped and have actually made an impact um, over theory projects, even if you think the theory projects are better um, technically. Um, just because uh, when you share projects that have actually been done for something um, and had results shown, um, you can actually like see, like you can actually articulate like trade-offs and decisions you have to make um, and showcase the impact. So yeah, um, these are examples of how Bianca outlined her case study for um, use UX University um, for User Experience Society. Um, it's very clear, as you can see, the research she went through um, the persona she made, you can see all the artifacts that she made to get where, to where she is. I'll talk more about case studies later. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this is like the structure of your portfolio, basically. Um, you should have an intro in your, in your front page. You should make your projects very clear. Um, project title, um, the time frame in which it was made. Sasuke got his curse mark from the tuning exam. Um, from Orochimaru, articulate that. Um, those are good things to share. And it's very clear where his, where the links are, um, uh, navigating to about work, resume, emails at the top right. Um, and he has a very distinctive intro because you can see that he's an Uchiha seeking vengeance for his clan. Would you hire this person? I would not. Definitely. But yeah, this is like a general example. Um, obviously, you can play around with the portfolio, um, uh, what it should look like, but these are the elements that should be present on the front page. Make sure your name is clear so people know what site they're on because people will have 50 tabs open. They won't see it in the title. You'll need to have it on your front page. Um, showcase the product clearly, have very good screenshots. Um, here, Manda's dying. It's very clear. Just make sure that these things are very distinct and visible. And again, um, when making your portfolio, try to consider this. Your portfolio should answer questions before you even have a chance to ask them. So what is the Sa Saskia's motivation, um, vengeance? <laughs> okay, last of your portfolio, sorry. I don't know why I did that slide. Um, make sure to balance memorability and familiarity. Um, I shared a standard template um, just because like, these are the things that people expect to see in the portfolio. Obviously you can deviate, but then they should be able to find like where your resume is pretty easily. Please don't make it like very difficult to get there. Um, again, optimize for scannability, make it super clear um, who you are, what your work is. <laughs> yeah, so optimize for scannability. Um, remember that someone will be looking through your whole entire portfolio um, and probably less than a minute, um, if you have statistics of like Google Analytics or something, you'll see that um, people don't really spend a lot of time on your site unless like, it's either people spend like a minute or like 30 minutes reading through your entire case study. Um, that's what I see usually. So remember, try to optimize for scannability, um, but also have enough information and process so that someone who really wants to delve into your work um, will have the opportunity to do so. And remember, portfolios are an experience in itself. At the beginning, we considered like the hiring manager and the recruiter. Um, they're two different people you're designing for, um, aside from like other designers who are stalking you and your friends. Um, so make sure that it's easy to understand. Like make sure that when you explain your projects, it's not super technical. Um, 
make sure that you consider like the user experience and the usability of it. Make sure it's delightful, but also like functional. Okay. And also our portfolios will obviously look different. Um, some people are focused more on user experience, others on visual and some branding, other people on strategy. Um, some, so some portfolios might be more wordy, some portfolios might be more interactive, others might be um, like showcases of like brand shots and things like that. Um, if you design a thing more sketch or like anything really, there's a lot of potential for like hyperlinks, prototypes, embeds, GIFs, make use of videos and things like that. It's super easy to make GIFs on Photoshop, for instance. Um, try to animate things. You don't want people to have to like click on each thing manually. Um, so try to add GIFs whenever possible. Use embeds on Figma. It speaks a lot. Um, the screenshots can be confusing, but if you just have like your prototype there, navigate the, um, people can navigate it themselves. And also, um, highly recommend you to get a domain name. Um, I think this is a really, really good investment. Hosting is free, um, usually, um, if especially you use GitHub pages, which is what people mention. But domain name, it's really good. You can reserve it. Um, you have your identity as a designer. You look super legit on Instagram and Twitter in your link area. Um, and I think it's a very reasonable investment. Um, this goes lower usually. Um, it's $9 a year, um, 450 pesos-ish um, annually, which is, I think, a fair price to pay. Um, and that's for a .com. So try to consider getting a, a domain name. Yeah. There are also dot .design domains. They're a bit more expensive though, I think. .com is really cheap. Get the domain name. Um, okay, so I'm not sure like how common this is in companies. It's usually only for like very top tier companies with very serious design teams. Um, oh, this is Namecheap. So recommendations for you can buy domain names. Um, Namecheap, GoDaddy, Porkpo, and Google domains. We, I personally use both Namecheap and Google domains. Uh, Fork Fun has like a dot design domain discount, I think. So try to look it up. Yeah. And there are sites also that let you find the cheapest like offer across different hosts. Just search like um the main name, like checker or something. Okay. So uh, the portfolio walkthrough again is like um something that companies with I think established design teams usually ask people to do. Um when they want to see how you explain your work in process and in detail. So this is usually like in like a slides or PDF format um, where you'll walk through like every bit in detail of your process. This isn't usually in the site because like sometimes you just add like flavor shots and branding, um, whatever. But then in here, you're going to explain like the end-to-end -end process. Like how did you do the research? How did you connect with stakeholders? Um, what it was that like? So again, um, I don't recommend showing your site. Um, those are built for different purposes. Um, site is just like to get people interested in you. Portfolio walkthrough, that's when people are already interested in you and they wanna know your thinking. And this isn't like publicly displayed to the whole world. So you can generally like, um, you can break NDAs here because it's not publicly displayed. Um, and you're generally doing it in like a presentation and a call with people. And again, PDF or slides format and it's um, usually heavily curated for a one hour walkthrough. Um, uh, the structure of it usually goes uh, as an um, introduction, you share maybe two or three projects, you do a closing, and then you talk with like designers on the team. There will be usually designers um, who will be watching your presentation and asking you questions and digging into your process. Because the goal of the presentation is for them to know about your thinking um, and things like that. If you've done the portfolio presentation, um, let me know in the chat, because I'm not sure how many people have done one. <laughs> But I can explain a bit about um, what I have done for portfolio presentations. When recruiting over the past year, um, basically every company's final round involves um, walking over projects um, in detail. And I don't use my website for it. I have made um, a separate presentation for it, um, like on Figma. So usually you begin again with a summary of your experience and interests. This time it's really different because you want to captivate people um, in the sense that you're potentially talking to people who you'll be designing with every day in your job. So share your interests, experiences, make them ex excited about you and humanize yourself so that you seem like an interesting and excitable person to work with. Um, so I would do a overview on my work experience, um, what I'm interested in, things like that. There's more slides in my introduction. I made it way too long. 
but just in a general example. Um, something good to do also is just present an agenda. Half that we like to do is um, um, showcase links. Um, if you have a tiny URL of your slide deck where people can like paste it in their own browser and follow along because you're probably presenting on Zoom or something, include that. It's a very nice touch. Um, it's like a user experience thing, right? Um, just so that's something always nice to include. Share additional documents if you can. Um, and when you go into your projects, what you want to be doing is sharing a high level overview of it. Um, what your role was, again, make that clear, the time frame of the project and the snippet of it. And then throughout the project, um, when you explain something end to end, we'll be explaining this more in like the very next section, but then show that you were solving a real problem, articulate the problem space and why what you made was like the right solution for it. How many experiments did you go through um, in order to get to that area? What were your iterations? Um, in the portfolio presentation, this is also a great place to showcase your entire toolkit. So in your website, you usually won't have enough room for that. But in your presentation, you can talk about like all the different like parts and diagrams and sketches you did. Um, I don't usually do paper sketches. I will make graphs or something. So I'll insert that there. Um, how did you synthesize findings? Like walk someone through like the story of making your project. Um, showcase your design. And again, same thing as on the website. Make use of GIFs and videos and interactives. Walk through it as if you were the user using your project. So for this project, um, this is like the case study I did for um, in Walk about BH. Um, yeah, at the very end, you want to showcase the impact of your work in numbers, anticipate questions. Also, like what would you have done differently or what was the biggest issue with the project? Um, try to address it also in advance so people know that you're self-aware. And it's always nice to share like learnings and takeaways from your project. Um, for the extra case study, if you have time, um, usually I do like two. Again, one is like a longer 20 minute one. The next one is like maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And if I have extra time for five minutes, I'll share like the work I do at Develop because I've been designing this organization together for like the past five years. So you've done a lot. Um, and you'll just dump that work and show that you do more than just like design and then in your first two projects, you also do like community organizing and you've done like marketing and operations and basically everything for an org. So those are nice extras that add on to what you do as a designer. Um, and you always end up with like a thank you and um, why express why you're the good fit for the job. So you want to customize the portfolio presentation to the company you're talking to. Um, why should they hire you? Why are you the person for it? Um, and some general tips on the portfolio walkthrough. Again, practice it over and over. This one you actually have to practice. Like, it's okay if your portfolio site sucks. If you make it at this stage, um, you will die if you don't have like a single practice section, I think. Timing is really difficult. Um, talking to designers and non-designers is really helpful because you have no idea who the people you'll be talking to are. Um, in your portfolio walkthrough, this is where you can actually like, not, you don't have to be super technical walking through the whole thing. That's what I do on your site. Um, what you want to do is like talk about things genuinely as if you were talking with potential teammates and collaborators. Because the goal here is also to, for people to assess your vibes. Um, are you a good person to work with? Are they going to enjoy like teaching you? Because again, you're an investment um, and they're scouting for your potential, not your copy. I mean, again, always make room for people. Um, make sure that you guys are on the same page. Ask if you have any questions and try to take control and lead the conversation. Um, Okay, everyone. So like now that you're all like mind blown by um the portfolios you've seen, especially um Gia's work. Tell us about how your current portfolio is like right now. What do you like not like about it, and how do you want to improve on it? So for me, um, I'm moving from GitHub to um Webflow because um again the responsiveness was frustrating. I I want to like focus more on my content, not not worrying about like the code too much so yeah and for my new portfolio i really want to like um rewrite things too because again like content more important than um structure let us know about your portfolios in chat and if ever you guys want help or feedback with your portfolio please don't be shy share it with um the developed discord we'd be happy to um Isabella has Great point. Um, if you have no idea where to get projects, honestly, things you can do with friends, um, things you do with friends as a side project are valid. 
um, things to do when you volunteer for organizations. There are things you can share. You can honestly do a research project on your own. Like you can do um, a redesign of something. Look at like uh, the government systems that we have or like um, road designs or, or road sign designs and things like that. Those are honestly things you can scout um, and try to do redesigns of. You can redesign apps, the government sites, services. There's so much potential. And it's super understandable if you don't have like formal work experience. Like it should really be self-initiated projects at the beginning. If you do fan art, um, fan graphics and things like that, I put that in my first portfolio to get my first internship at education.ph. Like I really put anime graphics there and that counts. Just remember that. And there's so many challenges that you can do. You can join hackathons. So you're actually forced to do something in three days. Um, feel free to ask us more. Um, there are lots of events coming up that we can share with you guys also. Um, but yeah, I, I know it's hard at the beginning. Um, especially if you don't have a body of work built up, I promise you will get there. And you likely already have valid work that you don't realize yet. So I'm going to be talking about like, there's so many questions. I'll try to address them at the end. <laughs> um, but how do you go about showing process no matter for you, the projects that you do? Um, so just a general overview of what people look for in case studies. Um, again, high level overview of your work. We talked about this a bit earlier on. Who did you collaborate with? How long did it take? What were the platforms you used? Like what software? Um, what skills did you use? Like did you do user research? Did you do like branding? Um, did you do type design? Want to mention those things? Hello, Bianca's sister. <laughs> um, do you want to articulate the problem and rationale behind your background pretty well? Um, showcase the decisions you made, the research you did, I misspelled research, trade-offs, and back it up with data. Show that you're intentional um, and that you're not just designing blindly or imitating things. Um, and the biggest thing in case studies is that you showcase the process. So useful process shots, like what artifacts did you make um, to design your project? What did you use to prototype things before making the final version? So let's go to the components of a case study. So again, general um, project details, you wanna showcase the problem. So did you actually like look at the problem? You know that thing about like problem space versus solution space? If you get blindsided into saying, oh, you wanna make a website um, to help people um, with healthcare issues, you miss out on like the whole, a whole different realm of like potential solutions that could have been better um, in addressing the problem. Um, so keep that in mind, make sure that you talk about the problem and understand it well. Um, know the people you're designing for, have a target market. You know, when you're like in high school and you make a business plan for like something and you just say, okay, uh, my target audience is like everyone who is on social media. You know, like it has to be more specific than that. So make sure that you look specifically into um, who you're designing for or rather who you're not designing for also. Um, either way works. And again, showcase your process. Iterations and techniques that you pulled out of your toolkit. This is a great way to showcase like, can you make a persona? Um, do you know how to do wireframes? Do you know how to do a competitive analysis? Um, can you run user interviews? Can you do protocols? Um, what did you do? Showcase that. And again, um, most important thing is what was the final output, but also like what is the final outcome? Like what did it result in? Even if it's just making like graphics for an org or making captions, like when you started writing captions or something, did readership and engagement suddenly jump? Um, you can probably attribute it to you. Um, when you make graphics um, for an event, is it just like visually pleasing or did it actually like influence how many people signed up for something? Um, you wanna consider these things um, and start measuring the outcomes of your work. So for case of these, it's not very good to like look into just like stuff on Dribble or be or Behance. I know I mentioned Behance is a good site, but then Many times people just show like final um, outcomes. Um, it's not, and it makes sense because it's like mostly branding projects, but then you, in case studies, you want to show process and these people really don't show that generally. They'll have like very, like the videos they show of like lots of circles and how it makes up a logo. Like, yeah, I guess that's process in a way, but that doesn't really articulate like what went on beneath it. You want to showcase like how you worked with like your boss or the stakeholders or the peers you were working with and stuff. So 
Um, there are some examples of case studies you guys can look up. Um, Yanka has a bumpy career rebrand. Sabi has personas and wireframes and stuff like that. Um, when she worked with Justine Chua to redesign um, the Border Collective into the bumpy career. Um, you can share the link in the chat if you want. <laughs> You're quite the love, Yanka. So, yeah. Um, Camille Fantasina also, um, she has case studies on Medium. Um, this one's different. It's not really a traditional product, but rather she articulated the process of organizing um, UX society, I think, right? UX box plans them online and remotely. How do they do it? Um, that's, that's really interesting because it's like a case study articulating like the work done over a system um, rather than a traditional like app or something. It's designing an experience. Um, so this is really interesting and available on Medium. You can showcase, showcase like the personas and the thought process that went into it. It's writing heavy, um, but it's also very clearly a user experience design project. So you notice that not all, um, really not all things you design are heavy on visual artifacts. It's, ra it's rather on, I guess, like the processes and frameworks and thinking and systems that go beneath it. It's super insightful and a good read. You can just Google that and you'll find it. <laughs> or someone can paste the link if you guys get to it. Um, we'll share these in the Discord. Yeah. Um, general last tips for case studies. Um, it's hard to write case studies. Like, just want to say that. Like, you can have a lot of projects, but then have no idea how to make your case study because you just, it's just hard to document things as you do things. Um, and I guess it's just also hard to get a sense of how to write them, especially if it's not intuitive in like your practice. Like um, if you're busy designing an app or working every day, you will definitely not have the time to like articulate like everything in a very neat and organized fashion, even if you know everything that went under their project. So writing it is like um, a challenge in itself. Um, so tips are read a lot of other designers' case studies, especially students. Like you want to focus on what other students it looks like. Like don't look at like, agencies and think that's the standard that the only standard you can look at students um start getting into practice of documenting your work save every single iteration especially if you like fight i guess with like the stakeholder or disagree um or have to make compromises those are really interesting times where you have to make like trade-offs into your design um in order to solve like the outcomes that the business wants or that the stakeholder wants um versus what you believe is right um so knowing the circumstances that went behind those things. Those are really good to save. Um, it makes for good stories. Save iterations also. You can showcase work that didn't fail, that didn't make it through. Something I really loved when I did um, an internship, my internship I worked so hard last year, is that we held um, this like series where we just talked about like works we like, but weren't approved by clients. That was really fun. Um, and again, case studies are also an exercise in storytelling. Communication is a huge part of design. Um, and this is one area of that. So, yeah. Okay, so there's a lot. Um, again, in general, before we talk about recruiting, um, we'll speed through that area. Make sure to get feedback on your work from other designers and devs. Talk to people in industries you're interested in, students or professionals. Remote, there's no better time. Um, and also, again, recognize your body of work doesn't have to be fully fleshed out. You're here to learn and be teachable. Um, and people are looking at you for potential, not your technical proficiencies. Um, so again, um, I know people will ask this a lot. So remember that side projects, um, class projects, or work, they're all valid. You're not expected to have like fully deployed and ship work. Some stuff you do in your free time, stuff you do for fun, those are totally valid projects. People are, won't really care. Um, so just remember that. Um, and we all start out there. Like no one's gonna start off like freelancing from birth. <laughs> so that's totally fine. Um, so this is general tips on um, applications for design internships, um, just from what I've like gleaned over the past years. Um, and again, remember just be a genuine teachable person to work with and you'll have no problem, I believe. Something I had a lot of trouble with when I was first design recruiting was like, I don't know, um, I was also, pressured and it felt like I had to know everything and that made my attitude throughout the recruiting process like it was really skewed and it was it not, did not go well for me um I realized that 
I don't know, once you're a lot more humble and like upfront about how you suck, um, genuinely, um, you will be a better designer. Um, that's just how it is. Um, so you don't need to be a design expert. Don't compare yourself to people around you. Um, don't compare yourself to people who are younger and seem better, please. Um, just remember that. And learn how to ad- admit it when you don't know something or a fault that should be a check mark. Um, <laughs> They're all excess and we got to change it. But also remember that you're likely better than you think you are also. I just want to say that. Um, okay, so how do I find internships? In order of like decreasing effectiveness, in my opinion, um, best way to get internships is referrals and introductions to roles. Um, obviously, you know, if someone, if your friend tells you, oh, my company's hiring, are you interested in this role? That's like the easiest way to get in. It's like having a connection in. Another way to do it is cold emailing. Um, well, that should be below the line technically, but then you make connections by cold emailing. Um, you can reach out to companies, especially startups, um, and just express interest in a position that's up or even a position that's not up. Um, and they're likely to respond because people like love talking to eager students. Um, we go to hiring person events. For example, I know a lot of people attended the Working Career Fiesta that's one example. I'm sure there are many more coming up. Develop has one coming up. Um, so keep that in mind. There's also like the job boards on Facebook um, and Facebook, yeah. Um, okay, so this is about cold emailing, just a very simple guide. There are better like articles that can explain this, but just so people know what cold email is, it's like, um, you know, just like find email, someone who works at a company you're interested in, and you, even if you've never talked to them before, you reach out, you introduce yourself, and you ask them if they have a role open, and you explain very concisely why you're a good fit. Um, so where you can find emails, LinkedIn, um, or just look at their website. Um, you can also use websites like hunter.io, where you put in like the domain of the company site, and it can get, guess um, the naming scheme of their username. So for example, like every like maybe everyone on Facebook is like mark at facebook.com. Um, so if you want to talk to Bob, you'll just be like, yeah, you'll fill it in. And Hunter.io does that for you. Um, so that's a tool that we'll share. Um, and all you have to do when you cold email, it's super easy. And I know it's intimidating, but honestly, it's just an email. Try to <laughs> realize that is um, you just share your name, your education, what's your year and major, the links you have to your portfolio and resume. Um, if you connected with them on LinkedIn or something, like just let them know how you've connected um, in the past or maybe someone you know that works there or someone you know of. Um, be very concise. Just explain um, what you're interested in precisely, why you're a fit for the role, like no more than four sentences. Um, and try to use your EDU email if possible because people like seeing that you're a student. So for example, this is an email I sent um, to the Sakai people when I was looking for an internship um, like last year. I just explained like, my year um, said that we were said that we were connected because we actually invited them for a talk at one of our develop events, um, and they did come and talk. It was great, um, and yeah, I asked if there were any openings in their design teams, and had a good response. So that's how you call email. <laughs> um, another great way to find job postings in design is honestly just like join the local design communities. These are mostly like product design and UX centered Um, because that's what we're familiar with but again um, something I love about like our local scene is that people are so so receptive to helping like young people that's not something that's present in a lot of other communities so check out these groups Um, UX Philippines, UX User Experience Society, the Figma Philippines group, Philippine Web Designers Organization, CSS Manila, um, the Startup BH groups Um, just look at those kinds of boards Try to find areas that aren't just like um, connected to your school or, or educational institution, and you'll be able to meet a lot of people. Um, even if you just make acquaintances with people, you'll find that word gets out really easily, and people are very, very willing to help each other. And just join Twitter. That's like a great example. Like so many Filipino designers are on there, so many founders are on there, so many connections. So, um, in general, design recruiting, what will the process look like? Application, screening, interview, offer. Note the distinction also between your recruiter and hiring manager. There might be like two rounds. It might be the recruiter who screens you first, and then you'll talk with like the hiring manager and actual designers, um, and you might do a portfolio with them, walk through with them. 
Um, it really depends. For applications, like it's hard to like prepare for this process because you don't really know what it's like until you go through it. But um, just make sure that when you're um, applying for jobs, you generally have these questions in mind. So at the start of the talk, we talked about that. Um, like know what your strengths and weaknesses are, um, have like a sense of self-awareness, um, know what you want in your job. Um, and these are questions that will come up. What is like graphic design? People ask that, what is the design? Um, be able to explain what your design process looks like, um, especially in the context of like maybe a project you've done. Um, you'll be you'll be asked to recall like situations where you had conflicts, um, situations where you manage other people. You'll be asked what your favorite product is or what your favorite designer is. Um, and something people don't know or not a lot of people know is that when people ask if you have any questions for them, that's a really a huge signal. Like you have to have unique questions for the company or agency lined up. Like if you ask an interesting question, like GG, they'll remember you <laughs> um, and they'll really appreciate that. So don't just ask like, um, oh, why do you like working here? That's like super generic, you know? Ask them something deeper. Um, ask them a question that will make them think. Um, yeah. And in general for interviews, practice with friends, practice with other designers. When you interview, try to schedule like the interviews with companies you really, really like for the end because you'll probably do better in those. Um, you get better with each one. I can say that with experience after interviewing like dozens with dozens and dozens of companies. Um, again, be genuine, be, you know, be upfront in how you don't know anything. People will love that. Um, have great questions prepared. Enthusiasm and interest is a huge signal. And remember, people again are screening you for potential, not skill. Um, so be excited about the role, show that you're very teachable, and you'll have a great time. Okay, so pretty quick for everyone, now that um you know how old is the kind of career I should go for, let us know like um what kind of what do you want to be as a designer like five years from now? And what is it like? And it's, align with where you are right now and if not how do you plan to move towards it so yeah like in the past i thought i would only do visual design but like getting into tech a lot of me realized oh i want to really get into product and processes like the more technical things really interesting development so yeah tell us about your career path Love to hear about your guys' career path and hopefully there are people here who can help you um, with referrals or connections or maybe someone knows someone who's in a company or industry that you like and you get a chance to talk to them. The power in sharing what you want. Um, that's something I learned over the past year. I used to keep everything to myself, but then honestly, when you talk about like what you're interested in, people will reach out and help you. So develop is also a great place where you try to do that for everyone. Um, so share that if you'd like. But, oh, last things about succeeding at your role. General tips are to underpromise and overdeliver, deliver Over-communicate, especially that we're remote. Meet people from different roles, absorb as much as you can, um, and try to have a lasting impact in your design org, either through the connections you make with people or through the processes you do. So yeah. Um, while you guys are answering the prompt, I just want to say some last notes because we are running over time. Um, if you haven't yet, please join us in Develop Discord for resources and conversation after. We don't want this to end just here. Um, we're always here to support students um, with career advice and help. We're not just an internship group also. We work on projects um, that center around temporary social good. Um, we work on um, collective action work. We build products and initiatives. We build experiences. So please um, definitely join us. Um, if you'd like to learn with us and build with us. And as you mentioned this, I'm sorry, it's annoying, but um, Develop is like funded by us alone. Um, so we're students who are doing this in our free time. Like it's 2.30 a.m. where I am, but I'm giving this talk because I want to share my knowledge, <laughs> even though I have so much to do tomorrow. Um, so if you like Develop's work, please donate to us. Like any amount helps. We have a Patreon. Um, we also have PayPal. Um, support our programming. Um, if you like what we do, we also have Gcash details. 
and you can help us to stay at least a bit more sustainable and it matters a lot because it means a lot to us yes and remember we're just students i'm sorry if the advice i gave you is bad uh if you're free to correct me and shout at me if it messes up your career <laughs> for questions you can ask now um I am very thankful to everyone in the chat who's been engaging with one another and has been answering each other's questions. Um, if you guys have specific questions for me, Bianca, um, feel free to drop them in the chat or on Slido. Um, and we're happy to answer and stay around a while. Um, you can also ask questions on Discord, whatever you guys want. Since a lot of people you want to get into UX, UI, I can talk about that, especially since I came from like a visual arts background like i majored in like art design in senior high school oh okay from hands and uh, wow a lot of questions stephanie design motion graphics since progress parts aren't good to show soft artificiality what's the best way to put that um just write it honestly um but you indicate that kind of proficiency like through the experience and projects you do Right. So if you develop like an app or a website in your spare time, they can tell, oh, he must be really good at like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Right. Um for learning graphic design for beginners, naman. Um we I'd recommend like just start um replicating your idols, but not at the point of plagiarism. Just take parts of what you like and you start um figure out your own style as well. <laughs> Like it's um I make use of like a lot of Pinterest and other inspiration boards and that's how I discovered like my own process I guess by having those inspirations around me. Anyone else who has questions? Yeah, what Jian said, develop an eye for design. So like really getting up to date is like your terminology, um, your foundation as a designer. Yes. Medyo mahina yung bosses mo. Anyone else who has questions maybe about like career shifting or like um portfolio tips resume tips or maybe you want to learn more about experience any good books or documentary pretty cliche but for design or I, I, that's always recommended. I know I, it's pretty cliche, but it's really um, it was useful for me. I got to learn a lot about um, thinking as a designer. Because of that, what is work like? If you're balancing it with everything else, it can be pretty stressful. <laughs> like especially if it asks for sexy time, you might end up like working overtime, right? So set your boundaries, guys. Thank you for the recommendation, Gian. The new basics. Get your books from Gian. Super big help in the design field. Also, if you want um recommendations for design, I just sent my arena channel of like I think over four hundred like fifty links to just like random design articles and stuff I read. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you're interested, also develop has an ethical design club that we run. Um, Signups for that will be open soon again. We're currently running like sessions. Um, shout out in the chat if you're a member of the club. I'm very glad for everyone who's a part of it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great design books um, listed there. We just finished reading um, Against Creativity in the Ethical Design Club. Um, I um currently reading in the politi politics of design and stuff like that. I think it depends on what area of design you're interested in. Um, what do you think of boot camps? Is it worth investment? I don't have 
a lot to say about boot camps because um, I don't have experience. But I think in general, I'm not really sure if it's worth it because you can pick up that experience yourself. And boot camps tend to be very overpriced. Um, the boot camps also the prof promise like um, a profit sharing payment scheme. Like, you know, um, you attend the boot camp, it's free. And when you get a job, um, pay us like a portion of your paycheck. I think it's like, kind of sketchy. Um, and there's generally not a lot of good reviews on it. But if you think, um, but if you talk to the alumni of the program, like the actual alumni, not just like the program representatives and they vouch for it, um, it's really good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just wouldn't recommend it in general. I also don't recommend like college also. <laughs> so this is my take. Um, so just keep that in mind. I think it's something that can be self-taught. And boot camps also are known for like teaching. Um, they're known for like producing designers that follow like the same formulaic approach to like case studies and writing um, instead of adopting their own identity, especially because it's so condensed. So I don't know. I think all design club isn't open right now. We will announce when registrations are open. I think you asked that before also, yeah. <laughs> Listen to all the ones in college <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, if you're a creative, it's weird because yeah, college, I think it just depends on like, I, I wish I looked more closely into like college programs um, and what design education looks like at different schools. Like for example, um, some schools are very heavy on theory. Other schools are very heavy on like practice um, and like OJT and stuff like that. So you, so it's only worth it if you obviously go to a school that aligns with your skills. Um, but school is also like, I don't know, because as a creative, you want to get as much work experience as possible. Um, while also establishing your identity and background as a designer, and establishing your own like sets of theories and frameworks. Um, so you need a, a balance. It also just depends on your learning style. Just saying um, some answers for questions here. Yeah, from Gian, if you're going to choose a school, choose one that teaches theory, because the practical skills can be learned anywhere, especially for free. You don't need to exactly like buy courses or take camps necessarily just to learn those and um if you did take a course and you want to like um build up how to build up from there you have to start doing projects um to show your learnings from that course because the certificate isn't enough to showcase that you're good at design right yeah yeah don't like ever pay for an online certificate Especially if you can complete it for free, but then pay for a certificate, that's such a scam. If you completed it, you did complete it. <laughs> um, yeah, just work on projects. That goes for anyone, whether you're in school or not. Certificates, yeah, certificates don't mean shit. Um, you really have to make projects um, and apply them. If you're in a school that teaches theory, you'll need projects because you're, you're just learning theory. If you're in a school that just teaches like, um, doesn't just like force you to pump out outputs, you'll need to know how to articulate things better. Which brings us to Elisa's question. In what ways can we practice better storytelling or make presenting our ideas or concepts better? Any tips? Um, in improving how you tell stories, uh, I think for me, it just starts with like, when I talk with other designers on the team or when I talk with other developers, um, how am I able to like concisely articulate the, the problem or the flow um, of the design um, in the context of the user um, or in the context of like the development team? Like, I think um, it's something that takes practice to do um, and it's something that you can start developing by using a lot of like artifacts to help you tell stories at first. Like for example, um, I mentioned that I'm not very good at like verbally presenting things on the spot um, in terms of like design projects and stuff. 
So what I did to like kind of solve that is I started off by like writing things pretty extensively, right? Um, and reformatting it and reading it to myself until it makes sense. Like, okay, this is what the user experiences or um, in the side of like a case study, like, okay, um, this is clear to someone who's non-technical and this is clear to someone who has no idea about what my work is. I'll get feedback from other people until it's like perfect in writing. And then um, once I have like a set of like personas and wireframes and maps, um, I'll re-use it, I guess, um, and just like see how I explain it. And naturally I'll come up with like a better order of like um, how I should structure um, the narrative I tell. Um, I'll move diagrams around. I'll change the way I say certain like parts and it will come better, it will become better. And um, once you build an intuition for that, I think it's easier to tell stories like on the spot also. Um, and presenting ideas or concepts. So really just like try to get it down in writing and in like the visual artifacts that you use to present your ideas or concepts, get feedback from other people within your team and outside your team if possible. Um, and really just like keep iterating, um, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you so much guys for even like contributing like your, your own answers in the chat. We're all like, I love how we're all like helping each other. There are some people asking where you can find um, the recording in deck afterwards. Recording will be YouTube. How about for the deck? You can find the recording right after this talk on Facebook, actually. For YouTube, it might take a while. <laughs> um, you can just go to our, our Facebook page. Um, and then you'll just scroll on to videos and you'll see the live replay of it because we're also live streaming right now. Um, for the deck, we will share it on Discord. Um, maybe after we blur out sensitive information, um, we can do it tomorrow. Yeah, I also suck at explaining. Don't worry about it. I think... Um, it's better if you like write it first and just like perfect it. It's as if you were editing an essay, at least. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's so frustrating though that some companies list out the requirements they want from you and it does not match with the position they're looking for. Yeah, there's a lot of also miscommunication with like recruiters um, and I guess, um, yeah. <laughs> and like the actual design team, you'll find that the job description never really matches up. Um, I think that's like something you can honestly do is, for example, if your GPA is like too low um, for a job, honestly, just like leave it out and maybe they won't even notice. Um, if you want, you can add keywords to your resume um, so it passes a filter. Um, and just because like it's such a biased game, you can honestly, uh, honestly just like play around it. And you'll realize that as long as you show the, like the competence, um, you're, you're totally qualified for the job. Because if people only applied to like job postings that they were like 100% like qualified for, like there would be so few ap applicants. Also, something I just want to share is like um, women usually don't apply to jobs unless like they fill all the requirements. But men will like apply even if they ba barely fit in. So just keep that in mind. It's you yeah you just have to apply and try and because the system is rigged like honestly just like try to play around it also you can you'll find out how easy it is to like bypass those kinds of requirements as long as you as long as you also break out of like the pipeline and like reach out yourself um make your name known to like the recruiter um if you like the pipeline is broken so skirt around it So oh, sorry to people who are, who here is in art school. Can we get like a count in the chat? I'm curious to know who's not and like how many are in art school. 
<laughs> like one graduate. I'm so sorry for feeding you like terrible information. And you're like, what are these undergrads telling me? <laughs> it's okay, guys. <laughs> There's so many art school students. <laughs> all of them together <laughs> thank you for sharing yeah i hope um, you were able to get a lot of good insights from this weren't provided in your <laughs> education yeah i i hope we didn't sound we didn't give terrible advice that contrasts what you guys learn um i come from uh, like i'm technically double majoring in computer science and art but then the art scene in my school is like very small undergrad wise most of my friends in art are like grad students so i have no idea what it's like i kind of wish i went to like art school instead of doing cs and art like that Let's go, Gian. I'm so excited for your talk tomorrow. Um, oh yeah. Um, plug for our come for our upcoming events tonight. If you also hate CS, um, like Raf, <laughs> panel of not shifting out of CS. <laughs> called CS wasn't for me. Um, at eight, I think. Yeah, eight p.m. tonight. If you'd like to drop by, um. We're hosting two amazing students who skipped it out and are talking about what they're doing now. 8.30, sorry. Um, and tomorrow, Gian is doing a talk about freelancing and pricing on the Discord. So please join the develop Discord. If you can't find the link, um, it's just like everywhere on our page. Um, so come by also for his talk. Um, so excited for it. <laughs> and I really hope this helped. Um, if you guys have any more questions, like if a question pops up or if you're watching like um, the video and you realize something or if you just want to bring something up or share resources or ask, oh, hey, what, was, what did you guys mention? Feel free to ask in the Discord or in the Facebook group or message our page and we'll do our best to reply. It's better if you message on the Discord. Um, then we'll get back to you and share the links and answer questions. Yeah, the, the event doesn't end here. We're always available on Discord and our Facebook. So just feel free to talk to us. And we're so glad that you guys came and spent your Friday afternoon with us. Really hope this was helpful. <laughs> so sorry that it was rambly, um, but I hope it was informative and educational. I'm so sorry because it's 3 a.m. for me and I definitely did not make sense at some parts. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna end the meeting. Good day, everyone. See you Don't all forget to Discord. donate to us and see you at our future events and see you on our Discord and Facebook group. Goodbye.